is the Friesland, a Tier 7 Premium Destroyer. It's one of the two reward ships from the Element of Choice campaign. I selected the Friesland because I was very interested in a ship that had a sub 2 second main gun reload time, even though it has no torpedoes. The other ship, the Loyang, I believe is based on the Benson, which I already have. I have a lot of ships with mediocre torpedoes. I have no ships with a sub two second main battery reload time. So let's get into it and see what we have. Let's look at the stats for the ship before any upgrades or anything. Survivability is 17,600. Artillery is four guns at 10.9 kilometer range. Reload time, as we said, is sub two seconds. It's 1.8 seconds. The turn time is 7.2 seconds, which is awesome for traverse speed. Shell damage is right around 2,000 with an 8% chance of setting fire for the HE shells every 1.8 seconds. So uh, in theory, this should be a pretty quick fire starter. Let's look at the AA defenses, okay. Maneuverability, 36 knots, 620 meters, a four second rudder shift time. All right, it might be pretty maneuverable. Concealment is 6.9 kilometers uh, without any concealment upgrades or commander upgrades. The commander will be Jersey Swirsky, which comes with concealment uh, as his base trait. So we'll take a look at that when we get to the commanders. Let's look at the upgrades. First upgrade will be Aiming Systems Mod 1, being a gunboat. Second upgrade will be, well, I'll try the Propulsion Mod, see if I need to go to steering gears later, but for now, without knowing anything about the boat, I'm picking a Propulsion Mod. Third upgrade is either Steering Gears Mod 3 or Concealment System Mod 1 or the target acquisition. So being a gunboat, uh, I might try something that I have never done before and go with this one to get a better spotting range, a better torpedo detectability range and an RGA of ships. For the fourth upgrade, Main battery reload time is already pretty quick. But I think uh, with a gunboat, you could definitely use more range. So I'm going to go with this. OK, let's take a look at the loadout. You have your normal high explosive shells, armor piercing shells. For consumables, we have a normal damage control party, two uh, smoke generator consumables, and the smoke duration is 28 seconds. The screen deployment time is a little over two minutes. Reload time is four minutes. And there are two of these. As far as the sonar, 3.1 kilometer range. For torpedoes, tor detection of ships is 4.4 kilometers. It runs for 96 seconds with a reload time of three minutes. 96 seconds is a little over a minute and a half. Engine boost is 8% speed increase. Uh, 120 second consumable duration with a reload time of 180 seconds. So two minutes for the consumable duration and three minutes to reload. You have two of those. I'm not running any boosters right now. And it does come with a Type 9 Premium Permanent Camouflage with a sea detectability and incoming fire dispersion of 4.5% respectively. Let's see what stats uh, are after the upgrades. Still the same number of hit points. The armor is pretty thin. Basically, don't get hit. It's for the artillery, 11.4 kilometer range. That is a little bit better. Same reload time and the same uh, damage potential on the main shells. There's your AA defenses. Nothing changed there. Maneuverability. 36 knots with a four second rudder shift time. Guess we didn't change anything there. Concealment is still 6.9 kilometers. 
use the armor. You don't really want to get hit. Reloader, above average main battery reload speed, tough. Above average HP rating. Full circle, main battery turrets can rotate a full 360 degrees. That is pretty spectacular. Friesland was the lead ship in a series of submarine hunters used by the Dutch Navy. The ship carried various anti-submarine weapons as well as 120 millimeter Beaufort's dual purpose naval guns, one of the most effective pieces of armament in the post-war period. Ship entered service in 1956 and there were eight ships in the series. That is awesome. All right, so let's take a look at the commander. As we said, the only commander available is Jersey Swirsky. So let's look at how we have him set up. His base trait is hide and seek. Increase the ship concealment rating. As for inspirations, I have Eric Bay. Increase the concealment of your destroyer. And Louis Villette, which reduces the duration of increased detectability of your destroyer after firing the main guns. I have them ranked up pretty high, so let's see if this makes a difference out in, uh, in a battle. As far as the skills, we do not want contact as eminent because we have no torpedoes. So I'm going to switch this to Observant Range, Observant Rage, and here we're going to increase the uh, ship concealment rating a little bit more. And here we do not want back in stock. We're either going to go with Twist and Track or Perceptive. I think we're going to go with Perceptive here. And this is kind of like the problem when you're using Jersey Swirsky with many different destroyers. When I go to use the or Orcon or the Biscuit, I'm going to have to change all of this back to get my torpedo capability back. But for now, for the Friesland, this is how we're going to this is how we're going to roll and we're going to use Unstoppable as the legendary skill. It reduces the engine repair time and gains reduced mobility with a disabled engine and or rudder. The range to the enemy ship to activate that effect is four and a half kilometers. If I were to upgrade the legendary rank three, radius would go up to six kilometers. All right, so let's see how the stats of the ship change after the commander setup. I may have to go and adjust more of these settings if I don't like the setup. Now we're just down to 1.7 kilometer, 1.7 second reload time but everything else pretty much did stay the same. Maneuverability, four and a half second rudder shift time. So rudder shift time increased a little bit there. That is not good. I may have to go change that around. And detectability range by sea is 5.9 kilometers. So let's go and change target acquisition to uh, well let's go with steering gears because I think if you're in the open water battle you may want to um, be able to move around so here I'm gonna sell the installed modification okay so now let's see what that does to the stats 2.8 seconds that is a little bit better that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard battle and see if we can get some highlights. Okay, we're in Greece. We're in standard. I'm taking a look at the teams here. See what kind of ships we have. Okay, the Atlanta definitely has a radar. Bismarck has a sonar. Ganesh now probably has a sonar. Alright, well, the plan is to play the ship a little bit like the Vemur and kind of stay behind cover. Or, I don't know, maybe sneak up on people with the uh, with the smoke screen. We'll have to see how this plays out. ship does seem pretty maneuverable I guess all right well just have to see what 
seven second reload times look like. And I'm perfectly happy to change some more of these upgrade options if the need, uh, if that's needed. And here you can see perceptive definitely comes in handy to tell you where your closest enemy is. So don't have to worry about a destroyer sneaking up on me on the other side here. So that's pretty cool. With the third skill, a lot of times I use back in stock because I'm more interested in getting a torpedo reload. But here, since there are no torpedoes, that removes that, uh, that hassle for you. All right, well, let's see what we got. Alright, so let me hit the smoke here and just hammer the Bismarck and see if uh, I can make these sub two second guns do something. We're really racking up the hits here, so if you're in a Havoc uh, and you need 100 hits per match, this is definitely your boat. Alright, well we're just continuing to hammer this guy, and according to Perceptive, this is the closest enemy to me. So that is pretty good. I don't really want to take the aim away to look around. Maybe we're going to will this guy away to nothing. Wouldn't that be something right off the bat? Well, this is amazing. All right. Well, we got the guy we didn't get to kill, but we got 36,000 damage off of the Bismarck. So that is pretty good right off the bat and now here's a Fletcher who uh, he does have torpedoes so you want to be a little careful started a fire on the Fletcher that is awesome got 50 seconds left in the smoke screen So all of these guys, well, the Nelson is kind of close. So let's see if we can start some action on the Nelson. All right, we start two fires on the Nelson. That is awesome. I'm trying to get above the island there. Seems like we're not going to get it done right there. Ten seconds left, so I'm going to move out of the smoke. And move up here to the capture point to help out the capture of C. I'm going to hit the boost to get there a little bit quicker. Now I'm spotted somehow. Let me hit the... Uh, Yeah, I don't really see who's spotting me. I'm not really being spotted anymore. I don't know why these guys left the capture point. So Iowa almost gone. So maybe I'm going to find out why they left. But I have every intention of capturing this uh, flag right here. So. Looks like the rest of the team is fairly far away, so this is looking pretty good for me to be able to capture C. 30 seconds to go, 45 seconds on the smoke. So I can probably close in to get a little bit more gun action. 
hidden. Other than that, I'd have to pretty much go out in the open. Alright, that must have been torpedoes from the Fletcher. Eight seconds, and we've captured C. 155 main gun hits. That is pretty good. Alright, so now we're going to head over to B and see if we can capture B. Five seconds on the smoke. And we're going to be able to maybe unleash some more damage here. The Ganese now is within range. Let me try... Well, as he's concentrating on that battleship there. This is uh, working out pretty good so far. You see, uh, Perceptive is telling me that Ganese now is still the ship closest to me. And it looks like my teammate is uh, pretty happy with this. All right, another battleship gone, 50,000 damage. That is pretty good. Yeah, there's a Fletcher here. Maybe we can rock this guy a little bit. Maybe his engine is damaged. That is awesome. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Problem solved, sir. Our team has taken the lead. All right, Dodjo's torpedoes. Very nice. Looks like we're going to win the first match in the Friesland. This is totally live. This, uh, I really came out with the ship immediately after the setup there that you saw. So this is, uh, this is working out just great. Got a minute and a half to go in the smoke. Oh, there's a... There's a cruiser behind me. So let's see if maybe he can come within range. No, he's staying out of range, but he is almost gone. So, okay. So we just have a destroyer left and there's an Akazuki. I'm gonna leave the smoke and try to help to get that guy. But it looks like he's pretty much done anyway. And there he's gone. So there you go. That is the very first match in the Friesland after the setup. You saw it live, more or less live. And there we go. We reached some more milestones here and we are starting to get some steel. Only five steel badges per, per milestone, but still, all right, very nice. So we finished with 230,000 credits. 55,000 damage, 233 main gun hits. So if you ever need to do this in a Havoc mission, uh, get main gun hits, that is. This is definitely your ship. And seven fires started, two defendeds, one captured flag, 5,000 XP, but that is uh, the premium ship. We'll see what happens uh, before the premium um, boosting. 264 global XP. All right, so let's see the team result. Third place, which isn't too bad. Uh, 1955 XP. So, you know, it is what it is. This is the first match. I've never played the ship before. Let's see what the economy tab looks like. Well, we made 90,000 credits on a tier seven ship. We didn't lose any. Uh, ship service fee, though, you see, is 140,000 credits. So you want to keep that in mind when you take the ship out. Well, that's it for the Friesland. The sub-two-second main gun reload time really is something. 
I'll probably play around with the commander settings and ship upgrades a little bit more in the coming weeks. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.